Okay, so I know that uh, part one was finishing very quickly, so I kind of rushed through the explanation here at the end. But hopefully you followed and understood. Once we solve for x, now we substitute back in for x. x was the cube root of t. And so then I cube both sides. Now, do we have to check for extraneous solutions here? No, because we cubed both sides. If we had squared both sides, then we would have to check for extraneous solutions. Next one. I want you to try and solve this on your own. I will give you a hint. Use a substitution. So, solve for this on your own. However you want, but you might want to use the hint. Try that. Pause the video. Unpause when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so here we should end up with s equals negative 3 fifths and s equals 2. Now, how did we come up with that? So, if you followed what I said, I did a substitution. I said x equals s over s plus 1. So now the original equation becomes 6x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals 0. Conveniently, this factors into 2x plus 3 times 3x minus 2 equals 0. So now when I set each factor equal to 0, now I went ahead and I substituted back in for x. So remember, x is s over s plus 1. So this becomes 2 times s over s plus 1 plus 3 equals 0. 3 times s over s plus 1 minus 2 equals 0. I do understand that s is kind of a crappy variable to work with because when you have been handwriting like me, sometimes your s's and your 5's maybe start to look alike. So you want to be careful with that. Anyway, now the rest just becomes uh, simple algebra solving for s. So here I subtracted 3, here I added 2. Now I multiplied both sides, this is a rational equation. So I multiply both sides by the least common denominator. So that's s, plus, s times, or I'm sorry, s plus 1. So this one becomes 2s equals negative 3 times s plus 1. And here I get 3s equals 2 times the quantity s plus 1. Bring, distribute the negative 3, distribute the 2, bring all of the s's over to one side, and solve. So I get s equals negative 3 fifths and s equals 2. Now, because this is a rational equation, I do have to check for extraneous solutions. So I need to make sure that when I plug in positive 2 for s, or negative 3 fifths for s, that I do not get 0 in the denominator. I don't, so both of those solutions are good. Now, one thing I want to point out again real quick also, uh, with the substitutions that we've done on the last two examples, you do not have to show the substitution if you don't want. If you are comfortable, you could have just factored this right away, into 2 times s over s plus 1 plus 3 and 3 times s over s plus 1 minus 2. So you can do that. You don't have to do the substitution. You don't have to show the substitution. It's more the thought process that you want to recognize. This is what we call of quadratic form. So although it is technically not a quadratic equation, it can factor like a quadratic equation does. Same thing here. You could have just factored this one right away into 3t to the 1 third plus 4 times 3t to the 1 third plus 4. So you don't have to show the substitution. It's really up to you. The substitution makes it a little cleaner maybe. Uh, makes it a little bit easier to see how to factor. Okay, so with an absolute value equation we can see from our notes that we want to isolate the absolute value, drop the absolute value, and create a positive and a negative equation, and then solve each equation, check for extraneous solutions. Well, here the absolute value is already isolated. So we're going to go right to the next step, which is create a positive and a negative case. What does that mean? Well, that means the positive one, I'm actually literally just going to drop the absolute value. The negative case, I'm going to drop the absolute value, but I'm going to multiply one side by a negative 1. So in this case, I'm going to multiply the 7 by negative 1, so that becomes negative 7. So now I'm going to solve each of these. Why do we do this, though? Let's back up a second. Well, let's think about what does absolute value actually mean. So remember, if I have something like the absolute value of x equals 5, that means that x is 5, or x is negative 5 right? Because absolute value is a distance. So 
That's why we have to do the positive and the negative case. All right, so now I go ahead and I solve each of these. 3x equals 5. x equals 5 thirds. 3x equals negative 9. x equals negative 3. Now here I do actually have to plug each of these back in to the original equation and see if they actually work uh, because I could have an extraneous solution. So if I plug in 5 thirds, 5 thirds times 3 is actually just 5. 5 plus 2 is 7 and then the absolute value of 7 is 7. So that's good. If I plug in negative 3, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7 the absolute value of negative 7 is 7. So that works as well. So both of those are my solutions. Okay, next one. This is a rational equation. We've done some examples like this together, so I want you to try to do this one on your own. Follow the strategy, find the least common denominator, multiply everything by the least common denominator. Also, don't forget to check for extraneous solutions here. So pause the video, solve this equation, Unpause when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so here I should end up with x equals negative 1, and I checked that is not extraneous, because if I plug that back into the original equation, it does not make the denominator 0, because negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, and this would just be negative 1. <coughs> now, how did I find that if you're confused? First, I recognize the least common denominator is x times x minus 1 because this has a denominator of x, and this has a denominator of x minus 1. This has a denominator of 1, so I don't have to write that. This also has a denominator of 1, so I don't have to write that. So I multiplied each term by x times x minus 1. When I multiplied the first term by that, the x's cancel, and I'm left with just 1 times x minus 1. In the second term, the x minus 1's canceled, and so I was left with negative 4 times x. The third term, I get negative 1 times x times x minus 1. And on the other side of the equation, 0 times anything is still 0. Uh, distribute, combine like terms, and I end up with a nice quadratic equation of x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. This conveniently factors into x plus 1 times x plus 1 equals 0. Set the factors equal to 0 and solve for x. Next one. So again, we already did a problem like this earlier, so I want you to try this one on your own. Strategy, isolate the radical, square both sides, combine like terms solve, check for extraneous solutions. Pause the video, unpause when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so here I should end up with x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. Again, how do I come up with those? Well, I isolated the square root, so I subtracted x from both sides and then I squared both sides. Don't forget when you square a binomial you actually have to distribute it. So you have to multiply this out. So I get 25 minus 10x plus x squared on the right hand side and 31 minus 9x on the left hand side. Then I brought everything over to one side and combined like terms and this again is a nice quadratic x squared minus x minus 6 that factors into x minus 3 times x plus 2. Set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. Now again, I have to check for extraneous solutions, so I need to go back to the original equation and plug in each of those values and actually make sure that they work. So in this case, if I plug in 3, 9 times 3 is 27, 31 minus 27 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5. So that works. If I plug in negative 2, 9 to negative 9 times negative 2 is positive 18. 18 plus 31 is going to be 49. Square root of 49 is 7. 7 plus negative 2 is positive 5. So that works. Next one. x squared plus 2 quantity to the 2 thirds equals 9. Okay, so how do we go about solving this? Well, here we need to recognize what is the exponent of 2 thirds actually telling us. Well, what that means, remember, because this is not new, 5x squared to the 2 thirds 
that's actually the same as the cube root of x squared plus 2 squared. So the numerator is the power, the denominator is the index of the root. Alright, so if I understand that, then this should hopefully be relatively easy to figure out for the first step. And there's really two ways in which you can think about this. One is if I recognize this is a power of 2 and a cube root, then to get rid of those, I can square root both sides and cube both sides because the raising to the power of 3 will get rid of the cube root, square rooting both sides will get rid of the power of 2. So if I do that, I'm going to end up with x squared plus 2 on the left hand side. The right hand side, the square root of 9 is plus or minus 3. 3 cubed is 27. So I actually end up with plus or minus 27. Now I solve each of these equations. x squared plus 2 equals 27. x squared plus 2 equals negative 27. x squared equals 25. x squared equals negative 29. plus or minus 5 x equals plus or minus i root 29 now do we have to check for extraneous solutions here very good question I'm glad you asked what is the answer the answer is no because what did we actually do to solve this equation we cubed both sides we also took the square root of both sides, but it's only if we raise both sides to an even power. So if we had squared both sides, or to the fourth degree, uh, then we would have to check for extraneous solutions. But since we cube both sides, we do not have to. Another way to think about what we're going to do at first, also, is if I want to get rid of an exponent of two-thirds, I can essentially just raise both sides to the three halves. Because remember, if you have an exponent raised to an exponent, they multiply. So two thirds times three halves is actually just one. Then you would raise the other side to the three halves, which is the same as what we did. So don't get me wrong, this is not a different technique to solve the problem. Uh, it's just a different way to think about it. But we raised this to the three halves by cubing it and taking the square root. Okay, last one, another absolute value equation. I want you to try this on your own. Pause the video, unpause when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so here we should end up with x equals 10 and x equals negative 1. We actually end up with x equals 10 twice. Uh, we also get x equals 1, but that is going to be extraneous, so that is not one of our solutions. How do we get these? Okay, so I do a positive and a negative case. So a positive case is just take the original equation, but drop the absolute value. Negative case, take the original equation, but multiply one of the sides by a negative 1. I chose to multiply this side by a negative 1, so it became negative x squared plus 10x. Now, both of these are nice quadratic equations, so I get x squared minus 11x plus 10 equals 0. x squared minus 9x minus 10 equals 0. This factors into x minus 10x minus 1 equals 0. And this one factors into x minus 10x plus 1 equals 0. Set each equal to 0. And then I get my solutions of 10, 1, 10, and negative 1. Now I have to check for extraneous. If I plug in 10, 10 minus 10 is 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0. 10 squared is 100. 10 times 10 is 100. 100 minus 100 is 0. So 10 works. If I plug in 1, I get 1 minus 10, which is negative 9. Negative, absolute value of negative 9 is positive 9. Here I get 1 minus 10, which is negative 9. Positive 9 does not equal negative 9 that is extraneous. If I plug in negative 1, negative 1 minus 10 is negative 11, absolute value of negative 11 is 11. Negative 1 squared is 1, negative 10 times negative 1 is positive 10, 1 plus 10 is also 11, 11 does equal 11, so that one is true. That is the end of part 2.